I was just um, eating lunch and I was, you know, sort of reflecting on the videos I made and, and, uh, um, <clears throat> and I realized that I left out one extremely important point. When you, when you watch this core thought and you see it grasped to, the, to these selected me, me thoughts, the core has these tentacles, sort of it grasps thoughts and it, it also, it grasps drama and excitement because it really doesn't like the now. It, it doesn't like the now the way things are. It, it always wants more. The core thought, because it's identified with insufficiency, it always seeks more. It's always hunting on the watch for more, more me, more this, more that, more everything. So we see that too, it wants more because it's identified with insufficiency. As, as I am, Al, as this is, it is not adequate, not fully sufficient. It's always lacking something. And just like the world always lacks something, my relationships always lack something, and certainly I lack something. It's a universe of lack, and that lack fuels this constant drive for more. So we see this, and we see how we always want more, even you know, more everything. And, and, and certainly we also want less this and less that because nothing is sufficient in this now. And that's why books like Eckhart Tolle's The Power of Now really have really much less impact than he would hope, perhaps. I'm assuming. I don't know Eckhart Tolle. Um, but that's why um, this now is never enough. Now, see that. And I want to switch gears a little bit. We see that the more we are free of, of enslavement to this core thought, the more we're at peace with what is, as it is, without this constant veneer, a pastiche of thought that we constantly are throwing at this now, when it suddenly becomes alive for us, free of, of this gray thought gluck we throw at this now, when it is finally free, and we're, and we're just feeling on top of the world and fantastic, something else happens. And this is really what motivated this particular video. Something else happens. We realize that our stories are really quite wonderful. The story of, you know, little you and little me and growing up and our parents and, and all the experiences we had, and, and they become beautiful. And by seeing the beauty, the love, the sadness, the struggle, the ups and downs, the in inevitable death, passing of ourselves, which we see in others when they pass from our lives, and we are in that solemn moment of connection, death is very solemn, and it's very freeing. And we're in that moment, in that moment, we just see how beautiful our stories are. And, and this, again, troubles me about so much of the non-duality movement. They seem to say this is just rubbish or just stuff, but it isn't. Just like the trees and the snowflakes and the rain and the oceans and the mountains and the forests are special, so are our stories. They are what make, make us distinctly human beings. They also equalize us because all of our stories have very similar qualities of, of beauty, happiness, unhappiness, struggle, challenge. And we're together in this. We see that the irony is, is that in our separation, we are one within that separation, within that individuality. And so I'm always saying, embrace your stories. You know, they're, they're, they're fun, they're, they're sad, they're, they're moving, they're poignant. And the word poignant really, to me, sums it all up. This experience has a poignancy because it's here and then it's gone. And it has like a little death to it. So here we are communing together, you and me, friends, and we feel the poignancy of this connection 
just as it happens. And we realize when we feel the poignancy, when we feel it in our hearts, we realize that our stories are simply magnificent. They're epics. And they're they're funny and they're and they're charming and they're and they have everything, every other quality. They're the greatest movies we've ever created. So we don't have to, you know, bring the same invalidating, negating quality to to these elements of our lives. You know, first you gotta see the insufficiency, how the now is never enough, and then the poof event happens, and then maybe you're you're motivated to be like a you know, some people and then negate it all and continue this this toxic, poisonous feeling of negation, or you can embrace it. And I urge you that you embrace it. Embrace, most of all, your own story. Because ultimately, ultimately, it's all your story. All of this is your story story. So this third video should sort of round it all out. Again, if you have questions, if you ever want to consult with me one-on-one, uh, -on -one, I welcome that. Um, there is a wealth of liberation in this journey together. It truly is. It's just beautiful. Thank you. <laughs>